Okay, so when you are um, picking out a worship set um, to do for your church, first off, uh, you need to make sure that you plan slightly ahead. What I do is I pick out on Saturday my set for the next Sunday, not the next day, the next week Sunday. So in that way, I'm always a week in advance. And why I do that is because that way, on Saturday, after I pick out the set, uh, the worship team and I go over the songs for the next day. And then we do the songs that Sunday, and I put them up. Then the next day, I'm able to text the worship team the next set. And by staying a week ahead like that, if there's any problems, hey, we're fine. And the worship team has all week to work on it. They have all week to uh, look over the songs. If they have any questions, they'll be able to get back to me by the next the, 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 the Saturday when we meet up for practice again. Um, and I'm able to think about it too. That, you know, If I pick them out before worship practice that day, I'm able to see kind of the flow of that, that week. And then I'm able to kind of build into the next week. Um, so let's look a little more about picking out worship sets. So this is just the typical um, the typical service. It's you're gonna have to alter a little bit if you don't have a solid worship. Um, uh, what's it called? Um, community worship. You know, uh, like for instance, a lot of churches will do one song, then a break, then two songs, then a break. Well, if you don't have a solid worship, uh, you're gonna have to. Um, Adapt it accordingly, but if you have uh, this typical setup of you know announcements, worship, sermon, um, this is the setup that I use for that. First off, you always want to start with a fast song and end on a slow song. Um, some people do uh, slow then fast and then back to slow again. The problem with doing that setup is it kind of sets the tone for the worship to be kind of a downer. And so people kind of won't get into it when you get into the fast ones. You can do it, and sometimes it works. But a lot of times people just kind of take the cue from the first song. Um, when people come in on Sunday mornings and Sunday nights and stuff, they, they've had a long week. They're, they're distracted. Um, the first song or two is oftentimes a complete wash. They're really not going to remember it too much. Um, after the second or third song, then they start getting into it, if, if you do it right. Um, some worship, sometimes you're able to pull them in on the very first song. That doesn't happen a whole lot. And that's going to change depending on whether you are in a rural area or an urban area. So keep that in mind. But typically you want to start fast and then go on to slow. Um, as far as how many songs, usually about five to six songs. If you go any more than six songs, oftentimes you'll just lose them. Um, sometimes you can have longer worship. But it really just depends how you do the songs. Like um, if you listen to like Jesus Culture, for instance, they'll make a three-minute song like ten minutes long. So if you're doing something like that, you're definitely not going to want to go more than five or six songs. Definitely. Because, I mean, people just kind of get bored with um, a song being repeated that much. Now, it works on some on special occasions and stuff. You can, you can really wind a song out. But a lot of times people don't like that. You have to kind of look at pop culture. What are people listening to? Well, people are listening to songs that are about three minutes long. So if you're going to take a worship song past three minutes long, that's past their normal. That's past what they are listening to on a regular basis. So already they're going to feel a little bit like, mm, why are we still doing this? So you're going to want to, if you do that, you're going to want to make sure that you really um, have a reason for making the song long. And what I mean by that is, don't do a song long just because you need it to be long, just because you need to fill up a certain amount of time. Don't push the song past its 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 natural flow. Um, you know what I mean? You have to kind of feel the music, feel where you're going, and be aware of what the congregation is doing, and then kind of follow suit. All that a worship leader really is, Matt Redman has said this a hundred times, is a lead worshiper. A worship leader is a lead worshiper. So what you're doing is you're kind of taking your cue but you're from the audience, but then you're also kind of feeding the audience on where to go. You're kind of trying directing it at the same time that you're letting them direct you. I hope that, that kind of makes sense. But when you're doing that, so the first couple songs you're going to want to do a little bit faster paced, and you're not going to want to really hang out on them. If your first song is like eight minutes long, buddy, you just lost it. If your first song is like two to five minutes long, you're okay. Singing song can sometimes be a little bit longer, but you really want to stick the first couple songs with only like 
three minutes. You really don't want to wind that out too long. And then when you get towards the middle, you can kind of take your time. And then as you get towards the end, you don't want to end on a song suddenly where like all your songs were fast and then the sixth song is really super slow and it just drags on and on and on because you spent the whole rest of the songs getting them wound up. Well, if you're going to get somebody wound up, you got to take something, you got to take them somewhere. You can't just get them excited and drop them there. You know what I mean? I remember as a worship leader, you're, you're not you're not a, you're not a cheerleader. You're not trying to rile them up. You're not trying to get them pumped for the week because then when when, when Monday hits, they're going to fall flat on their faces. What you're trying to do is you're trying to direct them to worship God. It's not your responsibility to open up the floodgates of heaven. It's not your responsibility to lead them into the presence of God. That's not your responsibility. Your responsibility is simply to guide the worship pro pro process of worshiping God. That's it. So don't get you know really bogged down when you know things don't go great. Eh, it's okay. You just do your best and you just stay on focus. Now I, I could tell you story after story. We have um, a lot of kids in our church, just a lot. And uh, there was a Sunday night when I don't even know how many there were. I think there were like 28 kids in the service, and they were all sitting towards the front, and they were all unsupervised, and they were just man, they were making a lot of noise. And everybody throughout the whole worship service was not worshiping. They were watching the kids. Um, so here I am, and what did I do? Did I get frustrated? No. Did I stop worship and address them and give them a long sermon about how they need to be quiet? No. Because honestly, I would rather the kids be in church than out doing drugs. Honestly. Um, and that's just me, I guess. But I don't really see Jesus saying, hey, Get rid of the noisy kids. I, I see him saying, let the children come to me. So, I mean, you kind of have to take, you know, sometimes take some a little bit of irritations. But what I'm saying is when you're doing worship and you got those kinds of distractions that inevitably come, I mean, it's just going to happen. You have to stay on focus and you have to continue to try and draw them in. Continue to point them to God. They're not worshiping you for your awesomeness. You're not trying to impress them. You are not trying to get them to like worship. You're trying to get the focus on God. You don't have to give a long sermon in between songs. You don't have to say anything. In fact, I would say 99.99% .99 of the time, I do not address the, work, the audience between songs because it breaks the flow. When people are listening to music, they kind of do this thing when they kind of zone out and it causes them to think and pray and that kind of stuff. But if you're constantly stopping and talking to them, it breaks that flow. It's like you're building a, 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 a an emotion and then you keep slashing it away and then build up another and then you slash it away. You can't do that. Five to six songs, fast to slow, carry them. Carry them through. You're helping them to worship God. Okay? So... Uh, What's what's the natural flow here? There there's some point at some points when you can say, okay, this song's in the key of G, this song's in the key of G. If I flow this perfectly, maybe sustain this chord with the keyboard, then the guitar can come in here. We can just go straight from this song to this song without a break. Then sometimes you'll say, okay, the natural flow is kind of this song stops, and then visible uh, audible break, next song starts. The, you have to kind of pay attention to the natural flow of the scent. What sounds good musically? So a lot of times worship leaders aren't real sensitive to how music sounds. But being a worship leader is a, kind of a lot about music. I mean, think about concerts that you've been to. What, happen, what would happen if people in concerts did the things that worship leaders do? You're all jamming out to the song and they stop in the middle of it and say, Hey, uh, you need to calm down and say, well, Man, we were jamming out. See, it breaks the flow. What happens, uh, how, how excited are people when the band gets off the stage and they do the little fake thing where they pretend to end, but they're actually going to do another encore? You can tell that it's staged. You, you don't want it. All you want them to do is to just play. Play the song. I mean, I, pl I, I paid so you play the song. Why are you wasting my time? And that's kind of how a lot of times people feel about worship. When it feels like you're baiting them. When it feels like you're setting them up when it feels like you are uh, artificially leading. When you lead worship, it needs to, it, there needs to be natural flow to the service that just kind of holds it together and helps it to um, have substance. Um, 
so then, okay, what, what do I want to do? Do I want to have some songs where they piggyback on each other? You know, like I said, this song's in G, this song's in G. Or do I want key diversity? This song's in G, this song's in D, this one's in F sharp. You know, what what am I wanting in all this? And you kind of have to be, um, you kind of have to be sensitive to that. And, uh, <laughs> uh, anyways, um, and so you kind of have to have to follow the songs there. And then also there's the issue of, is there going to be a theme to the set? Is it going to be something where, um, you know, the songs are going to take them from play, from point A to point B? Like the first song maybe is about um, how God is good. And then the next song is about how I'm going to bless him even in the bad times. And the next, time, the next song is about how I'm going through bad times. And then the next song is about... God being good, and the next song is about how my hope, my only hope is God. See what I mean? Is there a theme to the set? Do you want there to be a theme to the set? Sometimes themes get in the way, but sometimes they really help people to tune in. If there's an overarching theme to your worship set, um, sometimes that can really draw people in more so. Um, like for instance, let's say you sing a song like God Almighty, you know, where you're talking about how God is this Almighty. Okay, well help them to see how that's relevant. Now, I, I'm not saying that that it's not important that God is almighty, but maybe follow that song up with another song about how God is almighty. Maybe um, sing a song about his love or about you know how he does something. You know what I mean? Where, where it kind of takes them from point A to point B. They come in with their problems, their marriage problems, their kid problems, their work problems, all these different things, that they're distracted. I mean, honestly, it's a miracle that half the people half the people who come on Sundays come on Sundays, because there's just so much other stuff coming to life. But still, they they come. So help them to focus that attention and that irritation on God, and to take to take that irritation and to take it to God. You know, there has to be some kind of. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. Um, there has to be some kind of a flow to the worship service. There has to be something where. Um, you know, maybe you're going fast, and you're like, okay, third or fourth song, and you're like, okay, now we got to slow it down. Okay, this sounds good here. You, you know, there has to be some kind of where you stop and you say, okay, I don't want the guitar here. Bass, you come in strong. Uh, guitar, you hold off. Um, keyboard, I don't want any sustained right now. Drum, no cymbals, no cymbals. See what I mean? There has to be a certain point where there's just the, you, you have to follow the flow. And this is why worship practice is so important. Even if you just have one or two people on the worship team, even if it's just you, you need to have a time every single week where you are practicing and you're trying to make the song better. How can you perform it better? How can you play, mu play the music for it better? How can you do your job better? Read books, watch videos, read blogs. Get out there, watch other worship leaders, and ask yourself the question, what would work at my church, and what would make it better? And so then, as you're picking out the songs, you just kind of have to sit back and look at it and say, okay, what is the focus of this song? Is it a God-focused song or a me-focused song? And, well, what's the, what's the difference? Well, okay, so a God-focused song would be something like um, the hymn... Holy, holy, holy. I don't, I don't know if you do hymns or, or, or not. I don't care. It doesn't really matter. But let's say the song Holy, Holy, Holy. That's a God-focused song. Now let's say, say a me-focused song. Um, I surrender all. It, who's the focus on? Me. Now see, the thing is, is some people say, oh, well, you only need this or you only need that. But the Bible shows us, especially in Psalms, that you really need both. Because God... It's hard to worship God if he is not applicable to our lives. And you might say, well, hold on, that's a little bit shallow. Well, is it though? I mean, Jesus came, obviously to prove his righteousness, but also to make himself real to us. He's, he gave us the Bible. Why? To make himself real to us. You know, he's revealed himself in history. Why? To make himself real to us. So that when we're worshiping God, we actually have something to relate it to. We're not just singing about hypothetically God is good. We have experienced God. We have tasted and seen that he is good. And we are worshiping him because he's good. Now let me tell you about this situation where he was good in my life. Me. Now, back to you. God, you are good. See what I mean? There has to be a back and forth of God focused and me focused. Now, typically, you want the main focus to be God. 
Um, and the Me Focus song should only be in light of who he is, not just a song about me, obviously. Um, and you usually want to start and end with God Focus songs. Sometimes, like if you're doing a special worship night or something like that, you can start and kind of have it heavy, like songs about me, and then just kind of gradually move it to more God focused or more God focused. To kind of, because what that's going to do is people are going to follow you, and they're going to they're going to yes, I relate to this. My my life really isn't going like I wanted it to go. Oh, God is good. Hey, God does have this under control. Hey, God is sovereign over my life. Hey, God is good. See what I mean? You, you take them from point A, and you're taking them with you. You're saying, hey, let's go on a journey. We we have our problems. We have these things. Let's go on a journey to worship God. Because God doesn't need our worship. He wants our worship. Um, so when you, as, you're getting your service, as you're getting your service ready, you always want to stop and say, is there a natural flow? Is there... What what what's what fits best? Okay, so just a few general notes. Do not re refrain from this for for your life. Do not have wordy songs at the end of your sets. I mean, a good vibe can be ruined, ruined by the last song that you pick. And if you're picking a song that has like 17 verses and there's a lot of these thousand, blah, 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 you know, where you, it's like a tongue twister. I mean, goodness sakes, you're just gonna ruin the whole thing. You want the last song to be semi, um, semi easy. It doesn't. I'm not saying advocating hymns or not not using hymns. I don't care. You use whatever the heck you want. You use whatever's best for the church. But I am saying that you want to avoid things that are overly wordy um, for the end. Uh, don't try to repeat what others do. Well, this worship team leader did it like this, and you know he did this song like this, and so I have to try and copy him. And I got this new worship CD, and I'm trying to do exactly what they did, exactly how they did it. There has to be a point when you say, okay, that's not me. Um, own the song. And what I mean by that is, when you're singing the song, I mean mean it. I mean mean it. You're, you're singing the song, and, and don't just sing a song or try to make it sound good or try to make it sound like they made it sound. Own the song. Take the song and say, you know what, I mean this. This is coming from me. I'm not singing words on a page. I'm not trying to be the best performer in the world. I am, I, God, this, I mean this. And then also make it yours. You know, if you play guitar, experiment with the song. See what sounds good. See what your worship team is capable of doing. And highlight your worship team's strengths. Okay? Like, maybe my drummer is a little bit weak on this part. So let's not have him do this part that's going to be too difficult for him. Uh, you know... Maybe my bassist wishes that he had a little bit more primary parts. Let's give him a couple more primary parts. I mean, goodness sakes. Um, sometimes people try to make worship music too legalistic. I mean, either no worship, we don't have any instruments, or hey, we don't have any worship at all, or uh, hey, we have worship, but man, we have all these guidelines. And then other people go to the other stream and say, we have like five worship or, or guitar solos, and there has to be some kind of balance where you're keeping the focus on God, but where you can still have... A jamming song. I mean, there has to be some kind of balance there. God didn't say, hey, come and be as boring as humanly possible when you're worshiping me. He said, you know, worship me with the with the timbrel and the harp and worship me with all these, di all these different things. And he said, play with skill. Play with skill. So play with skill. You don't have to try and turn heads. But there has to be a point when... When as you're playing, you're saying, "Hey, you know this, 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 this sounds okay." Just because you're leading worship doesn't mean that you're the music has to suck. <laughs> so just uh, think about that. If you have any questions? Don't don't hesitate to ask. Them.